Oh, all right, you salty little fruit cups. See a little dingle balls. Uh, this is uh, start to finish video because I think that's quite valuable. And you may not think so, but the day when it comes that you have to do a whole job start to finish, you'll thank me. Who knows? I could be dead. These videos may last for decades. There'll always be a you face. Anyway, so this is a start to finish video on uh, axle removal. And it was part of a video I made about transmission removal, a start to finish, that the audio didn't come out because I got to buy a new camera because this camera sucks and the audio sucks and lots of things I've had to suck. Anyway, you're gonna, so it's somewhat truncated, but the important bits were preserved with okay audio, and this is gonna, this is gonna help you. It's gonna help you. And hopefully you find this one first before you find the other axle removal videos, because on YouTube there's, a, there's one guy with a cable and he's chaining it to a wall, and there's another guy who's pulling the ball joint, doing all kinds of fun stuff. Maybe even some of mine are erroneous, or at least the most effective way to do the axles. I will also put um, how to diagnose an axle from a previous video, it's only a minute long. And, 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 and like so, and then you'll know, and you'll have it all. Hi kids, I'm standing in the shadow of the world's largest ball of twine. No, that's not true, I'm under a van, like always. Anybody wanna learn how to diagnose an axle? This axle is fine so far as I can tell, but you're under your van, you've got it up in the air a little bit. If you're going in here to diagnose an axle, you can actually put your hand on it, and you can turn it a little bit, if not a lot, and of course you're also looking for tears in the boot and the leaking grease that would result. So as I rotate the wheel, you can see that. And you're looking, f if you had both hands on, or a hand on, on one side and a hand on the other, you'd be looking for a discrepancy in the amount of, of turn. But that's how you would assess an axle, looking for play and enough play so that if you imagine when the thing is under load, it's loaded in one direction. When it's not under load, it's loaded in the other direction. That play would allow it to chatter. And of course, a bad axle, the near universal symptom, at least on this van, is a speed dependent vibration that goes away immediately when you let off the accelerator. All right, we're gonna start here. While well, I give you dirty jokes and commentary, we're gonna start here uh, just getting the, um, I've already loosened the lug nuts. We're gonna get this thing up in the air. So I'm gonna put this van I don't know, in the position I normally would. Isn't this fun? Not really, no. Yeah. Now remember to only use the cheapest Harbor Freight jack stands. That may look insanely high, but it isn't because it has to drop on the jack stands. And the jack stand has to has to fit under it. And it has to be able to go up higher to come off the jack stand. I'd move the camera to show you where I'm putting this, but if you can't figure this out, you probably shouldn't be working on your your van. Okay. I guess I'll concentrate on this side. Uh, so I don't have to move the camera to the other side. Tools, baby. By the way, as in all my videos I should mention, if there's accidental in instances of butt crack, that's your problem. It's not my problem. I'm not going to win that battle. You're just going to have to deal with it. Helps if you loosen. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Hopefully these alloys won't fight me. Sometimes they do. I have a feeling this one will. Yep. Maybe not. Look at that. Hail Satan and all his minions. I suppose if you're smart, which you're not, or else why would you be watching my stupid video, you'll store the, the tire under the frame so that when it falls off it lands on that and does damage to that okay because we're just doing all i need to do is get this axle out which means i'll need to do the three bolts at the bottom of the ball joint the tie rod end but i do not need to take the caliper off and i do not need to take the rotor off 
it probably would make it easier in the long run, but it's too much work. So, let's see. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, I guess I'll move the camera for your, uh, for your goddamn convenience. With the tie rod end. That's a cute shot. This tie rod end is covered. What's it covered with? Spooey. There. This tie rod is covered with a rubberized undercoating that must have been optional on some vans because I've seen a lot with it. I am, uh, normally I would take great pains. Normally I would take pains to knock that off there before I did this. And remember, kids, the right tool for the right job. Hopefully, the gun will have enough stones to twist that off, and then there's some other tricks to it. Tie rod end. better equipped shop would have a deep 22, but I don't have one. Because I'm stupid. This is a 22, right? Yes. Oh, come on, for the love of Minnie Pearl's hat. Get up in there. Also important to wear eye protection. By the way, if the nut gets stuck in your socket, That's how you get that out of there. All right, now, we need a couple of things before I start. We're gonna need a six millimeter Allen. No, we're not. And, uh, and we're gonna need a uh, parts tray. Because only a, only a sap doesn't use a parts tray, because you'll lose parts. There. All right, now you don't need this, but boy, does it make it easier. You could just start beating on the bottom of this with a hammer or beat on it from the side. You know, I'm going to try that. An old timer told me. <sighs> An old timer told me that this is designed to pop that thing out. I don't think it's going to work though. Also, I'm using toy tools. Yeah, I don't buy it. Maybe on something bigger. It's just easier like this. Besides, I spent $7 on this, and I intend to get my money's worth out of it. Ugh. Fits like that. I don't even know what you call this silly thing. And I think, if memory serves, yeah, I don't have an 18. That's okay. It's not 18. It's 19. So there, that's something. What's going to happen is this is going to spin, nothing will happen, and then everything will happen all at once. Like your mom. See that? Everything happened all at once. Predictable. By the way, if you put each socket away after you use it, you'll never spend all week looking for some socket. All right, what does that allow? Well, it allows you now to put the hub wherever the hell you want. Is that the same size? 19, or is that the one that's 18? No, it's not 19. Watch, it's not going to be 17. And it's not. It's the one missing from my fucking kit. Which a former employee of ProMasters only took to, took to losing it the first day I owned it. I have an 18 here, but it's 3 eighths and not half inch. So, uh, I have a 3 8 to half inch adapter. Now, these bolts should come out, hopefully.
too strong a hope, that's when the lever kicks in. That would be tightening. You probably don't want to do that. You probably want to loosen it. An elegant but working. I saw it move. You can't, uh, you probably can't see on the back, but I can. And then the center one is a little tricky, but no different. You just put the hub in a different spot. You can't see, but what I'm doing is I'm chipping away at this rubberized undercoating to make the socket small enough where it's going to fit on there. These are original. I can almost guarantee they look like they've never been disturbed. That's going to be a problem on this van. It's just hasn't ever been worked on, which is a good thing. It runs great, except for this flex plate. Okay, again, here's where I punch myself in the face. Oh, that was easy. I guess you gotta be smarter than the bolts. Big ask. Okay, now, get this out of here. It's going to come to my side. Yeah. I can see all the magic. Hopefully the gun gets it because you kind of got to get it to spring over like this. No help there. Feel pretty good about that. Look at that. Who's your goddamn daddy? Who touches it in inappropriate places? All right. Now, I'll move the camera again. All right. What you probably can't see is this is a tool we made very many years ago from Dodge pickup truck parts. It goes into the hole in the lower control arm in the back of the lower control arm on top of the sway bar link and what it allows you to do oh shit I've already fucked this up god damn it that's gonna be a problem I fucked up because I didn't loosen the axle nut while the tire was on the ground I may have to set it back down on the ground shit oh no I, can, I might be able to wedge it all right, before I do, uh, before I take, what I'm going to do is pull the lower control arm down and that will allow this ball joint cup to release. And since there's nothing holding it on the back from the, the tie rod end, but now I have to loosen this axle nut. Let me see if I can show you that. I get to watch my axle nut. Probably do the job pretty well. Put my light back on the head so I look like the goddamn Statue of Liberty. We're here to to get that axle nut off. That does require a quasi-special tool. I don't know why I'm yelling. I have this wireless mic. Two quasi-special tools. A giant-ass bar and a giant-ass spindle nut. In case you were wondering, 46 millimeters. The problem is going to be that when I go to loosen this, the, the wheel is going to spin, which means I have two ways of holding that. I can jam something in the rotor, which I'll probably do as a test, or I can put the tire back on and drop it down on the ground to hold it, keep it from spinning. The problem is the transmission probably won't be able to hold this in completely, but you never know. And um, this nut, this ridiculous nut claims it has 400 foot-pounds of torque on it, which is absolutely absurd. Like, where's the fucking thing going to go? Can't go anywhere. But that's what the spec is. 
Well. All right, we're going to have to pin that. I suppose I could put uh, some lug bolts in there and attach a bar to kind of hold it somehow, but I don't know how that would work. Instead, I'm going to see if I can do this. I don't know if, if a piece of metal this shape will be strong enough to hold it, but maybe in concert with the transmission it might. See what I got going on there? Yes! Who's your goddamn daddy? Oh, that's the shit. That's the shit right there. Look at that shit right there. b b, -b bitches Ugh. And, it turns out, because I bought this, I didn't have this just lying around to fix shit in the bathroom, I bought it specifically for this function along with that breaker bar, happen to have an adapter stack that will do this. Look at that. So, the little piece fell out, as you can see, this is, cat. it's not quite castellated, but it's pinned. Now, when I put this back on, if it lines up, I may peen these over. I may tap it a little bit, but I'm not going to worry too much because these, these don't come off. They can't come off. I mean, here, I've taken it off. I'll prove it to you. Go ahead. Get the axle out. What are you going to do? Where can it go? I mean, it can move, but the, as long as the nut holds it snugly up against the backside of the hub, it, it's not going anywhere, all right? All right, now, this is where it gets really exciting, and this is where... A two-man operation is probably in order, and where uh, having a second guy would probably do it. What I'm going to be doing, I'll show you this while I got it on the stand, make sure it's still recording, which it is. You can see that the bar is in that hole in the control arm, right there, above the sway bar link here, it goes down in that hole, and as I pull this down, it's going to pull down the lower control arm. Now, hopefully... This van has enough miles and funk and whatnot on it where I'm going to be able to pull that down so it releases the, 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 um, the cup of the, for the ball joint. And then I'll pull this whole assembly just to the side because that will allow me to get the axle out. Because for the transmission to move, the axles have to come out because they're installed into the transmission. All right, here's where it gets exciting. So as I pull this down... You can't see me, but I'm actually got my fat gut on it. I'm going to try and balance my gut on it in such a way. <clears throat> All right. So when that doesn't work, you try another method, which I have perfected and has worked in the past, although I can't swear that it's going to work today. But that is this arrangement. Oh. Where if I pull that down? Fuck. See it? The trick of how the hell am I going to do this? There's one man. One man with a button fixed hairstyle. All right, I got an idea. Why is it everything involved rolling around on the fucking floor? There you go. Whoop. There you go. Oh, that was fun. By the way, well, I could show you. I have a camera. What that looked like was this. All the way up in the air with one foot here. Pretty graceful. Jesus, I just reseated it. Fucking stupid. It wants to go back the way place it was. Okay. Now, hopefully you can see the action, which is this. And the axle. Look at that. Look at that. All right. I'm going to take this out of here because it's going to fall and hit me in the bridge of the nose and make me take the Lord's name in vain. 
You know, I'm 54. I probably shouldn't be doing this. It's, uh, some might say it's keeping me young, but I would say it's making me old. All right, this is where it gets quite funky, and it needs some prep as well, which is a pan in case the transmission decides to start leaking out of the, uh, Hey, I got a wireless mic. I can keep talking, blathering like an asshole. In case the trans when the axle comes out, there's nothing holding the transmission fluid in behind the axle seal, so it can tend to leak. Uh, I have these, which you'll see in a moment, which are, I don't know, storage for sweaters and pom poms and shit from Target or from uh, Menards. Where's the camera? Oh, it's there. Yeah, it's that. It's one of those plastic. Tupperware things that if I put it on there it'll work and I have a shorter pry bar to get that axle to release because it has a, 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 a circlip for lack of a better term that keeps it into the transmission and I am roughly under the right spot I'm sorry if I blind you I guess I could do this without the light. Actually, I guess I could be clever and helpful and actually show you what the hell I'm doing so that you will learn. And if nothing else, you'll learn. Pay somebody else to do this goddamn job. All right. So, as the axle comes back, as the hub turns this way, this way, the axle should peel back. And since the hub is free of the ball joint, I can pull the hub out and that should give me enough clearance to get the stub of the axle, the snoot of it out like this. If you screw up, it'll pinch you and really hurt or you'll scrap an axle. In theory, you don't want to bend these too much, the axle joint. You don't want to make that angle too acute. So you put stress on it. It's going to suck. Okay. Hail Satan. All right. Make sure to eat some of the shit from the bottom of the van. What you don't want to do, by the way, is pull this accordion apart uh, because you'll fuck up the axle. Nor do you really want to pound it in with a sledgehammer, but... What I'm doing ain't that much rocket science. All right, we're gonna, gonna move this camera again. This is the axle as it spins and it's seated into the transmission like that. And it will take a combination of a light wiggle for it to pop loose like it just did. Then you're gonna get your pan ready because when I take it out, it's likely to, to dribble. I've got my pan pulled up right next to the camera. I don't know if you can see that. As I bring this out with some gentle but loving force, like that, it looks like it's going to be dry. But you never know when she's going to give. And it won't be anything you did. There we go. As I say, I didn't put a lot of pull on that because I didn't, I didn't want to damage this inner joint. But that is your axle leaner, your inner leaner. And then I will probably take the passenger side axle out without your watching me because it takes longer and you've already seen it. It is exactly zero different on the other side. The <clears throat> pry bar, the big long bar that I've built goes in the same way, it goes towards the rear of the opening. Those three nuts come off, the tie rod end comes off. I guess I guess I will film a little bit because the passenger side axle is different. There's an intermediary shaft, which is this thing. I don't know if you can see. This rusty shaft there with a white sticker on it. All right, kitties, we're over here on the passenger side. I want to show you how this axle works. Hopefully, hopefully I have the axle out at the wheel side and I'm going to show you how this separates. I'm, I'm, I mean, you would figure this out without my help, but okay. See what we're looking at there? That big rusty thing, that rusty thing, this, is called the carrier bearing 
you'll, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, there you see, you see a bolt there. It has three 16 millimeter bolts that bolted to the back of the block. So it's rigid and it travels across into the transmission on the passenger side. It is your passenger side intermediate shaft or, or, or yeah, intermediate shaft. And this is called the carrier bearing because this bearing carries the, the weight of the intermediate shaft. This side is the axle. So we're gonna be separating it right here. Hopefully, I mean, I am not gonna spend all day on this. Uh, either for your benefit or, or even my own. But hopefully, I can't see the camera, but let's assume that it's right. All right, I don't know if you can see, but I have the axle out and I'm gonna put my man tool here or, or here, either way, and add a little force. There's a circlip that makes this bite in so it can't fall out. And you may have to support the axle from the other side to make sure that the weight <laughs> Is it holding that together? And I may need to use a different tool because I can see that the way this one is biting is not perfect. The pickle fork technically isn't big enough. It should pickle fit over the whole axle, but it doesn't. And it doesn't bite either. Let's see if I can put some force on it. slips off and I... Ah, it's working. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Can you kids see that from your vantage point at home? See the splines emerging right there in the center? I can't see the screen very well, but... And it's out of focus. And even if it was in focus, I'm fucking old enough to be blind now. So, you'll see it move. I'm not answering that. Go ahead, keep calling. Once it gets past a certain point, like that, I should, I don't say will, but I should be able, yep, there, passenger side axle. I am Victory, I am Atlas, I am king of the winds and lords of the lower bowels. Oh, I must have had about 30 beers. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, frivolity aside, there it was. Um, so you saw how it's done. I suppose I skipped most of the passenger side axle except the, the, the carrier bearing part because that's the only part that's different. Everything else is identical pretty much. Not even pretty much. It is identical. Um, that trick by sticking a screwdriver shank or something into the uh, axle nut, into the brake rotor so you can hold it so you can, one person can get the axle nut off, that's pretty handy. The way around that, of course, is to have a friend hold the brakes on Stand on the pedal as you as you throw all your blubber at, the, at the, whatever bar you have to try and get that axle nut off. That axle nut claims in certain parts of literature to want 400 foot-pounds when you reinstall it. I think that's literally stupid. Um, in other parts of literature, it says 250 foot-pounds, which seems more likely. I don't think it really matters because you can stake it back in and it can't come out. And even if it fell off, where is it going to go? It's held in by the entire suspension. It doesn't make much sense. Another thing to note about this, which I didn't really illustrate, was that those three uh, bolts for each ball joint, they're kind of finicky. Um, be very, they're fine thread and they also, it tends to rust in there. Uh, and even on this job, I didn't film it, but I ran a chase down those threads to, to, to chase them to make sure they were good because if you strip one of those out, you are fucked. And they want to go in sideways. There's a lot of, it's just a plate with three holes in it, but it, there's some finickiness to it. Don't be, take your time on those. Be relaxed. Again, uh, the torque spec on those, I'm not actually sure what it is, but whatever it is, it's probably too high because the, it's not going to fall off. So don't go ape shit, uh, even though you want to. Who doesn't? What have we learned? I think we've learned a lot. All right. Well, until next time, my, my van driving friends, you little you, you Vando Calrissians, you whatever you are, I don't know what you are. Let's cuddle. Let's bring it in. Come on. He's a goddamn lovely man.